Mau Mau is like. Hold on, I think I got it now. He slaps the shit out of her. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta show that shit three times so you know what it was legit. Imagine living in the Apothecary Diary. I just finished the first nine episodes of Apothecary Diaries, and I gotta say, I, I can't put it down. Like, Mau Mau is definitely the best protagonist of this season. No, no, of this year for anime. There's only two real contenders here, and Apothecary Diaries ain't two. She's the GOAT. The world is crazy, and I honestly cannot imagine living there. But enough of that. We're gonna get right into the story. You are Mau Mau a girl from and raised by the wealthiest parts of the red light district. The high class courtesans are not prostitutes, but your mother, sister, and grandmother. Now granny wants you to work that corner and be the next high class courtesan from her business. But you don't want that life. You want to continue being an apothecary. And because you work at a brothel, you know all about the illnesses and symptoms a person could get. You get to do continuous checkups on people undisturbed. But because you're working on making cures and medicine, you start to develop your your junky tendencies, I like to call it, for poison. And boy, do you love poison. You love eating, drinking, testing out, experimenting on poison. You like experimenting on poison so much, you have to wrap up your left wrist because that's where you like to do your experiments on yourself. Now, before you left the house today, your dad told you one thing. Mau Mau, make sure you be careful out there and watch out for kidnappers. And you're like, dad, I'll be fine. Stop worrying. You go out. What's the first thing that happens to you when you get out of the brothel? You get kidnapped. You get kidnapped and sold. Not just sold, right? You get sold to the inner palace when you now having only two years left on your sentence. And by the way, you can't leave or you die. All things considered, you're taking this quite well. You're mad, don't get me wrong, you're still mad, but you are getting paid. And because you're intelligent, unlike the majority of girls in this inner palace that were taught the bare minimum of education, you're able to navigate pretty well. She knows if she looked more attractive, she could marry and get some better conditions. But she also knows that if she just sticks with it for two more years, she gets her freedom and some good money on the side. So she does not want the attention. In comes Shaolin. Shaolin is one of those kids that's always hyped up on sugar. She's the hype beast gossip best friend that we have in jail, telling us all the new news in the palace. Now recently, the highest ranking concubine is giving birth to her third child, the new crown prince. Problem is, her previous two children died, and now the crown prince is sick. She starts to list off the symptoms like headache, stomach ache, nausea. From this information, the gossip queen thinks that it's a curse. You look at her and you're like, you're like, that's stupid. Curses don't exist, hype beast. With Mao Mao deeming that she's been poisoned, and highly likely seeing that there's growing tension between the high level concubines because they're both giving birth at the exact same time with no one really able to break up their scuffles. Mau Mau sees this as like, damn. And after looking at the doctor that's been assigned to them, she realizes that, damn, this guy has no idea what's happening. They're lucky enough to live this far. Nicknaming him Quack Doctor because he's one of the doctors that continually gives you like the idea of curses and, and supernatural stuff. She starts to feel bad for them. And you know how we all have our own subconscious like little habits that we do? Her habit is basically talking out loud. So while she's walking away, she's talking out loud and someone overhears her with it happening to be the good looking Anooch that all the ladies are talking about. And you might be saying Anooch. Anooch basically meaning that men who work in the inner palace that have their genitalia cut off. And you might be saying, that's kind of, that's pretty fucked up. Why were they cut off? For you see, Chinese emperors didn't like the idea of their captured women being impregnated. So to make sure the palace still functioned, but he still had all the women to himself, he cut off all their dicks. Dick's gone. Dick's be gone. That, that, that is, that's, this high class in Nuge calls in all the servants right there. When the ladies get there, they're losing their shit. It is like them seeing Justin Bieber in his prime shirt off. Meanwhile, Mama is looking at him like, this nigga ain't shit. His riz does not work on her. He writes on a piece of paper, A, hey, you with the freckles, stay here. Immediately, she's like, fuck. But that shit was really clever. I'll give Dickless that. You see, that was a two part test. The first test was one, she's the only one with freckles. So obviously that singles her out, right? But two, she's the only person in this entire list of servants that can read and write. Automatically drawing his conclusion, it was her. Because how did she tell the concubines what was inflicting their child? She wrote on some cloth. None of these bitches can read or write. Automatically, it was her. So she gets called out by one of the high concubines, the one that she happened to save. And she thanks her. Because without that note, 
her baby dies. She happened to be the one that listened while the other concubine threw that shit in the trash. And Mau Mau is trying to weasel out of this and say, it's okay, you don't need to thank me, I didn't do anything. She's doing this for two reasons. For the first reason, is she accepts this thanks, that puts her a little bit more closer to the inner workings of the palace. And we just saw what happens in the inner workings of the palace. People get poisoned left and right. She is risking lying to a high concubine and be beheaded, but it's worth it because the long run is a lot of politics she has to play. But there's a second reason why she doesn't. She doesn't want to be another person's pawn. In hindsight, she did a good thing, but she did not think this one through. She, the high concubine, makes her one of her ladies in waiting. And our local junkie now has to serve the new nice queen. Now let's switch perspectives in the story to Jin's top servant, Alex. And like, he's in the office talking to his boss. He's like, boss, are you sure about this? He's like, boss, I know this is not saying much, but isn't she like, the smartest woman in this entire palace already she's at least smarter than our head doctor which is concerning don't you find that a little concerning what is she like 16 she's like she she's 17 not not the point not the point what i'm trying to get at is doesn't she like experiment on poison for fun and you're now giving her more power still i don't see what the big concern is alex aren't you worried she'll you know like poison all the concubines then kill her way to a concubine position make aphrodisiacs to ensure herself as the next empress slowly but surely manipulate her way to changing all the laws in our government and get her to a seat of power where we couldn't stop her even if we tried alex alex i see what you're coming from but there's no need to worry man i got this you know with a little bit of seduction she'll never step out of line didn't she just like vomit the moment you touched her? Like, I'm pretty sure she's immune to your riz, sir. Now look at it from Jin's perspective. You're the emperor's brother. That means you're the second in command in the country. You're good looking, physically and politically powerful. And every consort in this palace basically is trying to throw you the box just because you look at them. You have so much riz in that department. If the emperor was to write on a piece of paper what his brother job was to do, it was to basically toy with the women here and manipulate people as much as he can for the benefit of him. So he thinks Mau Mau is no different. And I'm just sitting here like, what are you about to do, Dickless? Like, really? So, so Dickless tries to pull up, right? This had to be some ancient fuckboy techniques he's using out here because he pulls up, right? He's got his like a whole bunch of like court hoes just gassing him up. He's like, ladies, ladies, calm down. Like, I'm trying to see my new girl, you know? And then he just runs into Mau Mau's like, oh, hey, Mau Mau, I need to talk to you. Come here. You know, make sure you make it to work tomorrow. I, I really, really, I need, really need to talk to you. <laughs> if animators could draw it, they would legitimately give him like one of those like light skinned fuckboy faces. The fucking like, price to say, Mau Mau is like literally looking at him like a fucking ugly bastard. He's, she's like, I really have to work for this guy. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll be there on time. Don't, don't worry, boss. She's like not only immune to the Riz, she's literally looking at him like he's beneath her, like he's a bug. And for whatever reason, he loves that. Like Mau Mau psychologically triggers something within him. You know the saying of, we want what we can't have? That is literally what Mau Mau is doing to him. Even when she does eventually smile at him, he's like, ugh, she smiled at me, ugh. So Mau Mau is called in to eat some food, right? And she, she's like, oh, cool, I get to eat food. Her job is to test out poison. And they're giving her like nonstop food to check. But she's in heaven for two reasons. And I'll tell you why. A, she gets to taste all the new types of the most diabolical poisons known to the inner court. And then the second reason is if it's not poison, it's the most delicious, high quality food no peasant would even be allowed to look at let alone eat next you could say they give her the keys to the car so to speak they give her her own lab basically her own little space to make any type of drug she wants but her first task is to make an aphrodisiac for some nefarious purpose that dickless is having her do someone is getting roofied and we don't know who the unfortunate soul is but she knows she was the cause of it <laughs> I don't know, looking from like the outside perspective, they kind of treat her not like royalty, but definitely high class around in the inner palace because she does not have to really work. All the other high class maids that the nice queen has, 
they do all the work because one like her skills they respect that she is very skillful and talented but the second reason is they feel bad for her because they look at the bandages and assume she was like abused or like something they don't know the real reason but even then after all that and she was brought here they now learn that she has to be the one to taste test all the poison which you know as a normal person i don't want to eat poison that could potentially kill me she loves it because she can literally just cure it so she's not that she doesn't really care that much she can find a new way to cure the poison but for a normal person that is death so Mau Mau is tasked to solve the mystery of the ghostly woman dancing nightly now let's just switch perspective to concubine fuyu okay so you're a princess who lives in the outer district you're a princess but you're the third princess so you're expendable and your parents decide to sell you to the emperor so they can get closer in power so you're now a middle consort in the inner palace at a young age trained to marry the emperor keep in mind against your will but you don't want to marry the emperor i know sounds crazy but you don't your heart belongs to your childhood best friend but he could never marry you anyway because you're a princess but what can you do if you're a woman in the ming dynasty of china you don't have rights so what do you do you fuck up you purposely mess up your dance routine for the emperor so him to throw you away essentially you appear timid and meek to lose his entrance you don't talk to people so that will they all they know is what's been heard from rumors ladies in the inner palace gossip so they start to badmouth you saying the best you could do is get a military officer which in china at that period was an insult but fuck them you don't want that life you're a cage bird here you can basically never leave anyways your job is to only fuck the emperor and make children but our best friend is that military officer who's asked for our hand. He's worked his entire life to get in this position to free us, but now he's in a terrible war that he could die from. If he dies, we have to be a mistress to some other bastard we don't love and be locked up in a very similar position. So out of desperation and to appear we are unstable, we start the sleep dance. Not sleepwalk, we dance our fucking hearts out praying for his safe return and we can't tell anyone this information because people have fucked over other people for less and have also been beheaded for less just out of spite your virginity could just be taken so mau mau is given little hints but is able to piece together this entire story if you were able to see that she literally could not talk to this woman could not talk to many other people who knew this woman could only go off of what she knew and seeing her sleep dance realize what the fuck was happening and what did she do she shuts her mouth she was a real one she don't say shit to no one she tells her a story from the bronx about her life and the people she knew who used to sleep while that being consorts giving a convincing story of hey we should just lock her up and let her serve her sentence literally shuts down don't say shit jen knows she's holding something back but he doesn't press because if he's told the truth he is obligated to tell his brother and some other shit might happen and trust me this was the absolute only and one way our best friend could marry us mau mau tell her tells her nice boss the truth because she wants to know with the nice queen agreeing that what she did was the right thing and wishes that she could have had a happy ending like fuyu to me this episode best encapsulates who mau mau is as well as what the story is about how she forever changed the life of someone she doesn't even know as well as someone who will never probably know who was directly involved in his or her happy life. Yeah, well, they're only needing just a little bit of information to do so. Back to Mau Mau. So the emperor himself makes a visit to ask you to look after his wife, his first wife. But what he's really saying is, hey, I hear you're pretty good with medicine and whatnot. Cure my wife or die. And she's obviously like, I don't want to die, so I'm going to do that. The wife is sick. She looks like death. So you put together a health routine that will fix her. Fruits, vegetable, rice, all that good healthy shit vegans talk about. But her personal servants don't want your help. These bitches act like they got degrees in science and shit, the way they talk to you. You would hope they knew what they're talking about. Given how close these people are to running the country, it is very much concerning that these people also don't know what the fuck they're talking about. 
they kick you out multiple times and you got a week to fix this or off with your head it's stupid but they still outrank you even though you're here on imperial order eventually with the help of dickless rizzing out all the women there you get in once you get there the real mal mal steps in hood mal mal comes out she takes health very seriously and when she gets a good look as the almost deceased wife that's in front of her the one that's giving him the most potential kids she finds she is covered in white powder powder that mau mau reveals in the first episode kills people after they wear it enough times she was able to get this said powder banned from the country and this woman is covered from head to toe in it she turns and walks to the head mate who is talking shit with the other girls this group is like the mean girls of the palace always starting shit mau is pissed she like you want to tell me why your first lady is covered in white powder this bitch is like this of course a peasant would understand high class fashion you must be fresh until the day you die mau mau is like Brr. Brr. hold on i think i got it now <laughs> it slaps the shit out of her no no hold on hold on, hold on. i gotta show that shit three <laughs> times so you know what it was legit <laughs> grab that bitch by the hair and dragged her and this is how i know the other girls are just some hoes the rest of them could have jumped in and helped her but everyone in the room could feel the black air forces resonating from this girl no one dared to stop her she poured the rest of that powder shit on her he's like you feel that idiot do you sense the mercury in your lungs yet high enough contents of this shit makes your whole body shut down and go numb did you know that losing the ability to eat you dumbass you're poisoning her grabs that bitch by the hair again white powder is poison say it with me white powder was poison I was feeding her poison. I was feeding her poison. Now, what are you? An idiot. Good, you can learn. After that, she runs that entire shit. The queen is like, damn, these bitches are incompetent as fuck. If only I had her like two years ago, I could have had three children, my husband constantly here. I wouldn't have to look over my damn shoulder every damn day, especially for my sister who definitely has helped kill my children and wants me dead because this girl would have sniffed out all that bullshit and when she's done healing her physically she goes and heals her mentally because the queen is having basically suicidal thoughts after the death of her children you see she actually loves the emperor unlike some of these other consorts of the palace and she feels like her time is coming to be replaced soon so as a last bit of her helping out this woman, which she didn't have to do, she taught the queen the dirtiest, most nastiest techniques used in the brothels to ensure a shelter emperor would visit her often. And does he come to visit often? Unfortunately, Mao Mao admits that she doesn't have the sizable fruits to employ such a technique, knowing the almighty power it holds. And now they're gearing up for like a garden party where her boss gives her like a gift but next just holds her down and gives her a makeover while doing her makeup they notice her freckles are fake after jen sees her with makeup on with no freckles i think it's fair to say his loins were very tight that day but hearing the reason why she degraded her face and put freckles on her makes him devastated and rather guilty basically men who didn't have enough money for for brothels or didn't get their fill just grabbed and took girls to the back of the alley she basically did this to keep herself safe, but she still managed to find herself being kidnapped. Jin is a decent guy, but more importantly is the second in command. And because of his mistakes, the country's lower class is starving and having to sell their children into slavery. Mao Mao is mad, but doesn't direct it towards him since he really can't make this decision. Still, he marks her by giving her his hairpin, which has multiple meanings in Chinese culture. She gets two more, one from a lost puppy, and another one from the first wife basically saying you can come work for me and i owe you a favor no matter what it is the head spot is yours all these hoes are cooked but they get to the main event the party where powerful men and high class beautiful women come to mingle where military officers who fight on the front lines for the country can feel honored for their service and try their luck with the ladies in waiting or maybe get some action with a desperate middle consort who knows but then the show really begins because that's when Mao Mao gets to do her job of tasting for poison and everyone is just watching 
all the servants are scared shitless because they know their life doesn't mean shit to these people. They could easily die right in front of them. And this guy doesn't want to watch it because he doesn't like seeing scared people eat poison, understandably. But Mau Mau is a different breed. She's making a show out of it. She's making this poison food look like the food of the gods the way she's eating it, with one of the dishes being poison. After she hurls up all the poison, receives news that a high consort, being the youngest, Li Shu, had a poor reaction to her dish. Mao Mao makes quick work of this and realizes that she simply cannot eat mackerel. She has a normal food allergy and nothing will just help her stomach get with it, right? She, she's legitimately just sick. This obviously should be known by the cook as well as the people who serve her. So they know what to do if she ever gets sick. She could literally suffocate and die, which would be the fault of the food taster. So she looks directly at the food taster is like, I know you know this. You still fed her that food. I've labeled what you should do in a case of an emergency, but don't let this shit happen again or we're all gonna know that you fucked up your job and you killed her. When she gets home, she realizes what the hairpins actually mean and represent, but she still wants to go home and see her family. It's, it's been a full year since her dad still hasn't probably learned that she got kidnapped. Her, her dad probably thinks she's dead in a ditch somewhere. She has no idea what happened to her. So to get back to her family, she has to give this man pussy, not hers, but the best high class pussy in all China and he gladly accepts it. I also like when she does go home, the first thing that happens to her is Granny just fucking gut punches her as a welcome. That was to let her know that she loved her and you heard her. Don't ever hurt her. <laughs> and through the randomizer, he gets her mother figure. S simple high class consorts have nothing on her. Meanwhile, the boss of the head lady is just like, she has no idea what those hairpins mean, huh? And they clearly didn't do anything. She's like, this information will break his poor little heart. I'm gonna go torment him. And that's what she does. She she starts to torment Dickless. She's like, yeah, my girl is highly coveted now. What can I say? She's like, your girl was getting piped out by another man that she just met. Oh, you've been trying for about, I don't know, a couple months now. You just gonna have to wait until she come home. And he's like, when she gets home, I'm gonna tear that ass up. Every episode is like a new rumor, case, or mystery she has to basically solve. New ailments she has to make for the said case, maybe. Or like a new outbreak she has to go cure. The show really could run forever. It, the concept is a never ending concept. Like just look at freaking that Conan one from like Japan. Like, Mau Mau don't need a man. Like, when I came in here, I thought it was a romance, and I was, like, very, very shocked. I'm like, Mau Mau is the GOAT. Like, she's just out here doing her. Like, she could, she does, she has no ambition to go higher up in the food chain because this is, this is perfect for her. She, she's happy. She is content with this, and that is perfectly okay. In a couple of months, she's able to get a lot of things changed in China and have a lot of impact by just simply not moving up in the hierarchy of things. Basically already met three of the high consorts, dealt with the emperor, the second in command, some of the high military officials, and has actively changed laws. Saved many of the consoles who were basically there against their will and got a man laid. She's the GOAT. She's just the GOAT. 